Born to run, baby. Born to run. Welcome to the De Leon. Another shrubbery! Not another shrubbery. Then, when you have found the shrubbery, you must place it here beside this shrubbery, only slightly higher, so you get a two-level effect with a little path running down the middle. <laughs> Hello, slot car fans. This is Rob De Leon with the De Leon Slot Car Raceway, and today I'm going to show you how to make shrubbery. Yes, I did say shrubbery. And this is going to be best for landscapes that have a desert type of terrain or possibly a scrub brush type of terrain. And uh, let's get to it. I'm going to show you what I've done so far and I'll show you from the beginning to end and then show you the finished product when I'm completely done. So here we are in my garage again. It's about two o'clock in the morning and it's kind of the only time I can really do work because of the heat. It's about 95 degrees in here, believe it or not, even at 2 in the morning. This piece of landscape was created by gluing three different layers of foam together to give the appearance of a slab of rock. I then gouged up the face of this rock slab to make it look a little more authentic. I was originally thinking of the terrain you might see out in the California desert, possibly Arizona, and this was all created with this pink foam that you're very familiar with. So once the glue is dried, I take out these colors here. These are kind of just earth tone colors. And you kind of use whatever you want to use, whatever looks good to your particular taste. I then paint the rock formations with different layers of color, trying to modulate the look to give it a natural effect. And once I'm done with that, then I start thinking about how I'm going to decorate it with shrubbery. Here's a good shrubbery. The decorations in question are these little bushes right here. They kind of look like a little scrub brush and they were created from cutting pieces off of a roll of twine. You can kind of get an idea of what they look like close up. I then take the twine and I cut about an inch and a half to maybe two inches of that twine. And what I'd want to do after I cut it is that I kind of roll it tight to get all of the fibers to kind of go the same way. So once I've straightened out the fibers, then it's time to glue. So I will take my hot glue gun and I will put a small bead of glue right in the center of that piece of twine. So you just want to take a little ball of the hot glue and rotate it around the outside of that straw. You kind of want to stay kind of in the same area, kind of in the center. And then once you have that, you give it a second to cool just a little bit and you take your fingers and then you're going to roll that glue tightly around the fibers. I always feel like sometimes I get burned but it's not really that hot. So there you have it. Now you've basically have sealed the center of that little piece of twine and the next thing you want to do is you want to take some scissors and we're going to cut it in half right onto the glue. So by cutting this right in the center of the straw you've just created two little pieces of brush and they can be a little bit smaller they can be a little bit longer I would probably make the sizes a little bit different so that they would replicate you know this kind of plant out in nature so at this point you kinda wanna start to plan where you're gonna put your shrubs at you wanna keep it kind of random you don't want to make patterns if you can avoid it and so you're gonna look around and try to create areas where you think more vegetation might have grown. At this point what I like to do is take a little bit of color, in this case it's Kelly Green, and then we've added some water in here to make it really thin. I will take some of these cut finished pieces and I will put them inside the water, not all of them, but I'll take maybe half of them and I will let them soak overnight. And what you'll notice is that some of them will pick up a little more color than others and it gives you a really nice variant in, in uh, the way that they look, especially when you have one that's green maybe that's uh, glued next to one that maybe has no color. Overnight, you can let them sit in the water and then pull them out and put them on a paper towel, let them dry. And uh, that color will start to soak in and some of them will be a little bit darker than others. And at this point, I will start to separate them into light colors and dark colors and I will take this dowel here that you see it's kind of sharpened on one and I think these are used for uh, shish kebabs 
and I will just simply poke a hole right on top of the foam in different areas and I'll probably push the uh, dowel stick in there maybe a quarter inch or so. You don't want to hog it out. You want to make it as small as possible because it will fit exactly the uh, size of the uh, shrub. And I'll put a little dot of Elmer's glue. You can also use um, um, other types of glue like Mod Podge. Um, clear glue is fine too. I just put a little dot on top of the hole and then I will stick the shrub right in there. The hot glue on the end that you put on earlier will kind of provide a little bit of stiffness so that it can go in there easier. At this point while it's gluing you can go ahead and start to spread the fibers out and you're just going to take your fingers and you're just going to pull them out a little bit so that they start to form what looks like a, a bush. We've got bush. And some can be a little bit tighter and some can be a little bit looser. You know, just do whatever you think looks good. I find creating landscapes like this very relaxing and almost therapeutic. Uh, kind of the same way I feel when I'm doing model kits. So now that we've got this one in place, you probably have another 50 to do or so. I also like to incorporate some of this crushed up foam and I think this is uh, that kind of foam stuff that you can buy at Hobby Lobby. I don't remember where I actually got this one from. Uh, you can watch one of Boone's uh, videos where he actually makes this himself. And then I have also some of this moss. You can buy the moss at Hobby Lobby or at Michael's. And it comes in different colors. You can use this to add a little bit of different textures to your landscape. Um, you can cut some small pieces, you can cut some larger pieces, and then I think about where this kind of stuff would grow on the rocks. Uh, typically I would think maybe kind of out in the corners, kind of in areas that are a little bit hidden, maybe in some undercuts of the rock. And I'll just simply glue this with just a little bit of a dab of Elmer's glue and press it right into place. And the nice thing about this is you really can't mess it up. It's pretty simple, and, and if you do mess it up, it's just a little bit of paint, a little bit of glue, and you can do it all over again. A few things I learned about doing this kind of work that I do differently now than I did before when I was building model dioramas is before I would have created this with plaster cloth and I might have put a coating of a glue mixture with baking soda over the top of it to create my uh, little variances in the rock and it was very time consuming and you had to wait a long time for it to dry before you can start painting on it again and, and messing with it. But when I saw Boone creating his landscape with just simply drywall spackle right over the foam, I adopted that method as well and that's basically my go-to method now. It, it's so much quicker and so much more efficient I can get a lot done a lot faster. While you're doing your landscape like this, you know, get creative with the design. Um, you see I have some rocks I cut into the surface over here and there's a little slab I put up on the top and sometimes less is more sometimes you can create a, a nicer looking landscape when it just is not so cluttered with stuff uh, one of the other reasons why I don't really have a whole lot of trees and stuff is because I like to see the cars going around and a lot of times if you put a lot of landscaping trees buildings and stuff what ends up happening is the cars get obscured and since one of the things we do is we race um, it's kind of hard when you can't see your cars going down around the track now I brought out this 132nd scale electric Mustang to show you the scaling of this rock formation and typically a rock formation like this would probably be three times as high but we don't really need to do that in order to sell the effect so we can kind of keep it a little bit smaller and, and still kind of get the feel and the taste of what we're trying to put together. So my little tutorial here comes to an end and I think you've got the gist of what I've tried to create here. You can see it was not very difficult and pretty much anybody can do this. Just take your time and look at a lot of reference material and after a few hours you're gonna have something that looks like this. Now I can even add more to it if it just doesn't look right um, if it has too much, I can take it out and repaint the holes. So it's, it's basically a living project. You can spend as much time or as little time as you want on it. If you like this kind of content, 
please give me a like and maybe even subscribe. Maybe even leave a comment. 